Hey, this is Rick Terrio, your Maine real estate guide, coming to you today from the town of Corinth, Maine. It's a little breezy out here, which is nice because it's going to be about 90, so it's nice to have a summer breeze, but bear with me with the audio because uh, it might be a little, a little hard to take with the background noise till we get inside. But um, I'm going to try to break this video up into uh, a few sections. We're going to start with the, uh, the grounds and the exterior of the home. Uh, there's a lot to talk about there. And then we're going to talk. We'll head inside the house, check all that out, and then we'll talk a little bit more at the end because uh, there's a big outbuilding here. It's uh, 60 by 48. It's about 2,880 square feet of uh, of shop potential out there that uh, we'll we'll talk about in, in a bit more detail towards the end. So let's get started on the exterior of 129 Ledge Hill Drive here in the town of Corinth. And what we have here for you folks is a log home in the country. There's over 2,000 square feet of finished living space inside the house. As you can see it's got a four car attached garage one bay of the garage this one right here in front of us with the metal roof has an outdoor wood boiler in there so you have alternative heat you can burn wood and have uh, heat without uh, without the mess of having a wood stove inside we'll we'll check that out in a little detail once we get inside the home sits on 2.45 surveyed acres on this quiet country road in the town of Corinth. Corinth's a nice little town, about 1900 population, about 20 minutes into Bangor, about the same into Dover. Nice place to live. The street out front, pretty quiet, low traffic, low enough traffic that it also serves as the ATV connector trail. So when, if you want to ride ATVs, you can ride directly from this property, just jump right on the road and head to the trailhead. So this is kind of the street view of the home. The roofing is a combination of metal over some sections and asphalt over others. It's got a drilled well, septic system, three bedrooms, two baths, nice landscaping. The hedges look great, freshly mulched. Expansive yard. The house was built in 1983. The taxes on this country home were $2,926 in 2022. It's got 10 rooms, three bedrooms, two full baths. Here's a couple of beautiful peach trees that are pretty young. I don't see any fruit this year. I don't have any fruit on my peach trees at home either. We had a late frost that when mine were, uh, bl the blooms were out. And I think that's why I don't have any fruit and probably the same. Whoop, uh, take that back. There you go. He's got a few peaches. So even here in Maine, you can grow fresh peaches in your yard. Wonderful. Here's a nice patio sitting area, hot tub area in the back, right off the family room. Great place to grill and enjoy the summer weather. When it's a little cooler on a crisp autumn night, maybe have a dip in the, in the hot tub. A little too warm for my liking to be soaking in, in a hot tub at this, this time of year. Pretty much all the mowed area that you see here is all part of the property. So it's an expansive country lot, 2.45 acres. And then we'll do a quick view of that huge shop, 60 by 48. I don't know how many times I've had people say, I want more garage than house. <laughs> you have found it here. 
there is definitely more garage than house. You got over 2,000 square feet of finished living space, but you've got almost 4,000 square feet of garage space when you combine the, the huge shop building over there and the four car attached to the home. Here we are on the exterior of this uh, uh, detached shop building. It's 2,880 square feet. There's about 1,200 square feet of, of insulated finished space that is heated and cooled. There are two commercial grade um, heat pumps that provide the heating and cooling. There are also two separate 200 amp services to this building. So there's a multitude of uses a person could do with this. Uh, you could have a welding shop on one, in one bay, you could have uh, an auto body shop in the other. Uh, it, it's, it's lots of potential here for a home-based business. Currently, uh, it's configured as a medical marijuana uh, hydroponic grow facility and it, uh, some of that equipment uh, is available if a person wants to purchase it and, and continue in that line of work. It would be uh, negotiated outside of the real estate transaction, but it is available. So again, there's 1,200 square feet of space that's insulated, heat and cooled with two commercial grade heat pumps, two 200 amp services that can hold up to 24 grow lights powered through the controllers. It's, uh, it's, it's a nice facility. I'm not going to go inside that today because uh, uh, the pets that uh, were in the house are being uh, housed in there. You might hear a little bit of uh, yelping uh, through the mic, but uh, we'll, we'll avoid uh, that situation. This, this space here is, is uh, unheated uh, and uninsulated, but, but huge. Uh, this, and uh, I don't, you could store a camper in here, maybe two. It's, uh, it's quite, a, quite a space. The property line ends right about here. You can see uh, part of a stake there in the ground. And it extends way beyond that mailbox down to the end of the, the uh, mode area here. But here's kind of a wide panorama of the property. So we'll take a step inside this lovely country log home and uh, it's coming to market at a very attractive price. Beautiful log home, three bedrooms, two baths, about a little over 2,000 square feet of finished space and about 4,000 square foot feet of garage space between the, the shop that you can see in the, in the background and the garage that we're about to enter into. Uh, don't mind uh, some of the clutter. Uh, there's a young family here. They've got a couple of kids and, and a couple of pets and all the trappings that go with it. So we're going to look beyond that and look at the house. So let's, let's step inside and take a look at 129 uh, Ledge Hill Road here in Corinth. So here's the interior of the, the garage. We enter through the, the man door. Built on a slab. If you're questioning why is there this slot in here, well, one of the things that we get in, in Maine in the wintertime is a fair amount of snow. And so there, I, I'm sure that drains into the perimeter drain around the house. So as your snow melts, it, uh, it slopes down here into this area here, which catches the, uh, the melted snow and gets it out of the, of the structure. So, you can put three cars in here. Once all this, this, uh, the trappings of uh, raising a young family are, are removed and uh, uh, there's, there's room to spare. There's storage upstairs, we'll check that out. And, uh, and, and the boiler's over on the, on the far side. So let's, uh, I'm gonna break right here and then we'll head over and take a look at the, uh, at the wood boiler, which in Maine, it's, it's it's, it's, we have a pretty long heating season. Uh, firewood is typically uh, your least expensive method to, to uh, heat a home. I hear uh, the fuels are firewood with the boiler or oil uh, with the boiler downstairs. And so, uh, you know, you can uh, heat, heat a little bit with, with both. But uh, during the your bulk of your heating season, having that outdoor wood boiler going saves you a ton of money uh, on your heating bill. 
So we made it around the obstacle course to the, the boiler, and it's a big one. It takes a big stick of wood. Uh, you don't need to cut and split uh, small pieces. You can throw uh, full log size uh, chunks of wood, a couple feet in length and uh, you know, 10, 12, 14 inches in diameter will e fit easily in that huge, huge door. Um, this is plumbed directly into the heating system down downstairs. The, it's, uh, this burns wood, heats water, and the water circulates through the house, uh, through radiators, and provides heat. That's how a, a wood boiler works. That's how an oil-fired boiler works as, as well. But this is a, a full-size garage bay dedicated, dedicated to this boiler. During a typical heating season, uh, the family that live he lives here say they burn between six and eight cord of, of firewood on, a, on an annual basis and approximately 300 gallons of heating oil. Before we head into the interior of the home, we'll head upstairs, which is just storage above the garage. It's unheated space, but I, who can uh, complain about having too much room to store things? Lots of room. As we enter into the house from the from the garage, we enter into what it could be a mud room, small office. Uh, it's got uh, vinyl plank flooring that was just recently installed. They're using it kind of as a little office space with a coffee station, kind of cute. And we take a step up into kind of a coat area and anti way into the uh, into the kitchen we'll step over here this is uh this is a four season sunroom there's no heat here but it's open to the house and it stays it's it's insulated it's got good windows uh, they, they use it year-round <laughs> currently they're using it for for a bedroom for one of their their children but lots of potential here in this this large sunroom area You can live all on one level. There are, you know, the basement's got some finished space down there. Uh, there is a loft area that's open up, up above as well, but um, the uh, bedrooms and bathrooms are all on this level. So you can definitely have uh, one floor living here in this home. You got vinyl flooring in the kitchen gas stove for cooking, microwave, refrigerator, dishwasher, nice counter space, beautiful cabinets, they're hardwood, look like maple. Got oak flooring in the family room. Dining area. And here's where you can step out through your sliding glass doors to your outdoor living space. Your hot tub, gas grill, and outdoor furniture can be located. Here's the first full bath with a tub and shower combination here. Here's the primary bedroom or master bedroom as we used to call them. goes into a very large 
master bath. One of the largest I've ever seen. They're using it as, to store clothes as well. But it's a pretty expansive. So here's another bedroom. Pretty good closet space. We'll head up to the loft next and then, uh, then down into the basement. So this loft area could be used, right now it's being used for, for storage, could be many, many things up here. Another bedroom, sleeping area. For me, I'd probably have a fly tying station and a reloading bench set up here. I think it would be awesome. Uh, a great space to, to do that, add some, add some additional lighting, and uh, would be a great place for, for hobbies such as tying flies or reloading ammunition. space behind this door is unheated space. You could finish it off a little more and, and you utilize it. It's just attic space, which goes out over the garage. That's where they added the garage on and tied it in here. But I think a person could right uh, in this area, wall this off right here. And, uh, Insulate the, insulate the ceiling, add, add a little ventilation, and uh, you could have uh, oh, an additional, I don't know, let's see what's that. It's 246, 8, 60, about 120 square feet of space there. Let's head down to the basement. So you can access the, the basement area from inside the home as well as through a bulkhead on the out, from the outside. Check that all out. Portions of this are finished space. They use this as kind of a family room. Couch and television and computer set up down here. You get the laundry room set up. Right next to that, nice place to fold your laundry. This room here could be uh, another uh, bedroom down here. They're utilizing it as an exercise room, but it does have a closet. It does have a, a place to uh, access the exterior for safety. It is heated. All kinds of room in this home. This is the uh, mechanicals room. The, uh, they utilize it for storing and some pantry use. Uh, the home is wired for a backup generator. It does not have a hardwired generator. There is a place to, to hook one up, up, uh, up outside of the garage. And this is the transfer switch. So in the event of, uh, a power outage out here. Uh, you'd want to want to have your uh, backup generator fueled, of course, and then just plug it in and uh, hit the transfer switch, and then you can power your house uh, with your with your generator until the.
problem is resolved by the local utility. Here's the oil fired boiler with a hot water a booster tank adjacent. There is a wood stove down here. They've never used it. It was here when they purchased the home. Two uh, 275 gallon oil barrels for heating oil. This is a great workshop area. Got some nice cabinets, shop lighting. Here's where the, the outdoor uh, wood boiler is plumbed into the home through these, these lines here. Here's your bulkhead door. It does need a set of stairs. then just more unfinished space down here in the basement. So this is a very well built log home. It's a post and beam and log construction. Can't really tell by the camera. You really have to see it uh, in, in person to see how thick the flooring planks are, are up there. They got to be at least at least two inches. They're two plus uh, of uh, tongue and groove flooring uh, in a that you can see exposed uh, in the loft area and uh, I'm sure that's exactly what is uh, for flooring under the vinyl here too is very thick tongue and groove flooring. Another shot of this large garage space again one of the few places I've ever brought to market that you definitely have more garage than home. You got over 2,000 square feet of finished living space of house and almost 4,000 square feet of, of garage space. It's awesome. So let's go take a, a closer look at the shop and then we'll wrap this up. So on my drive back to the office from uh, 129 Ledge Hill Road in Corinth, I was reflecting on uh, the morning's events, and I don't think I've provided enough uh, area information, nor have I given you a, a main real estate guide tip in a while. So let me talk a little bit more about the area around Corinth. Corinth is a nice, small community. Uh, uh, as I drove over there from Millinock, at the, and you can get there, uh, basically following Route, uh, Route 11 uh, the whole way which goes through some beautiful rural country. Uh, the areas, uh, Corinth itself, as well, as well as some of the surrounding communities of Bradford and Charleston, largely uh, old farm communities. Uh, there's still active farming going on over there. You see a lot of corn fields, uh, hay fields, potato fields, so, uh, uh, cattle grazing in fields. Uh, it's just a very, very pretty area. Uh, there's farm stands around there. You can get, uh, uh, lots of uh, uh, locally grown produce uh, nearby uh, the, the property. And there's a couple of businesses that, uh, that I passed by, or one in particular today that, uh, that I frequented in the, in the past, and will continue to do so, and that's Maple Lane Farms in Charleston. If you, uh, if you end up uh, moving to Corinth uh, or, or the general area, Maple Lane Farms is a, is a fantastic place to get locally raised beef and, and pork. They do a fabulous job. Uh, you can you can stop and buy and pick up uh, you know s small quantities uh, right out of their freezer, or uh, you can order a you know a whole side of beef or or you know a whole critter if you want. Uh, they do just a fantastic job. But uh, this morning uh, I, I discovered a, a new business that I I lived at 129 Ledge Hill Road in Corinth. I would be frequenting quite often. My wife uh, ran over to pick up a something for me to eat because I left early this morning to go uh, film film this property. And uh, the bakery that I was hoping to pick something up on the way by was closed. So when uh, she ran out and there's a, a neat store, uh, bakery, bakery that's run by some Amish folks. 
uh, that uh, live in the area called uh, Little uh, Lad's Bakery. And I'll tell you what, the turnovers that she brought were fantastic. And she said they had all kinds of, you know, fresh breads and, and pastries and cookies and crackers uh, and uh, uh, cold drinks and whatnot. So Little Lad's Bakery, uh, right on the main, main street in Corinth. So if you're in that neighborhood, uh, this, that's your main guide tip of the day. Check that place out, because I'm telling you, that was one of the best turnovers I've ever had. So if you're looking for a home in the country, in the greater Bangor area, and you like would like a, a three bedroom, two bath, about a 2,000 square foot finished living space log home with a four car attached garage and a th almost 3,000 square foot shop building, all for $380,000, you want to give Rick Terrio, your main real estate guy, to call at area code 207-731-9902 or my wife who's co-listing this property with me, Nancy Terrio, at area code 207-731-9901. Look forward to hearing from you soon.